OK, so in this video, we're going to look at functions. And the first thing we're going to look at is just some function notation. OK. So here's three different ways of uh, stating a function. OK, and they all basically mean the same thing. And it is describing the relationship between your X values and your Y values. Uh, another way of describing that is your inputs and your outputs. So in other words, if you have some X values or X coordinate points, your inputs, in other words, then when you sub them in here and do three times that X value take away two, you will get the result or the Y values, the Y coordinate point or the output. There's the different ways that you get to think about it. So just to get a better um, understanding of what I mean by the relationship between your X and, of course, your Y or your input and your output. Let's take this one here. If the function is stated to be F of X is equal to 2X, OK, so the function just means it again, it is identifying the relationship between the X and Y. It's letting you know what is happening. So let's write this as y equals 2x. It's often easier to replace the f of x with y, OK, because we have a better understanding uh, sometimes using this notation. OK, and remember, it's the very same thing. So y equals 2x. Now, so remember from your coordinate geometry, OK, uh, and your x and y coordinates. Remember, your x coordinate always goes first and then you've got your y coordinate. If we have this function here, y equals 2x, it's describing the relationship between the x coordinate and the y coordinate. And in this here, it says that the y coordinate has got to equal two times the x. In other words, the y is equal to double the x. So thinking about a point which would satisfy this function, OK, uh, y equals 2x, where the y coordinate is double the x, we come up with, say, X is one, then Y would be double that, which would be two. So there's an example of a point that would work with this function. When you sub in one for the X, we get two for the Y. Let's take another function. So let's say you have F of X is equal to four X minus one, or Y is equal to four X minus one. So here the relationship between the X and Y coordinate is that the Y coordinate is four times the X take away one. So let's say uh, the X is two, right? Sub that in. Let's work out what the Y would be. If you subbed in two for the X, you would get four times two is eight take away one. That would mean the Y is seven. So does that make sense? If X is two, the Y is seven with this function. So Four times the X coordinate take away one. Four times two take away one does give the Y coordinate yes. So two seven is another point that would be on that function. And when we come to graphing function, we'll see that actually that function there uh, and here, OK, when we have just a power of one, in the X's, that is linear. OK, uh, I'll talk about that again, but that just shows that this point here would be on that linear function and a linear function implies it is a line. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about the types of functions. So here when you have something like 5x plus 1, so as I was just saying, when you have just the power and it's just a power of 1, uh, it is what we call linear and that means you're, it's going to give you a straight line, okay? Now, we'll actually get into the graphing of that line next, all right? But I just want you to give us an idea of how to spot when you have a linear function. Or in this case, when we have the power of two, this is called a quadratic function. Now, a quadratic function will give you a curve, OK? So a linear function will give you a line and a quadratic function is going to give you a curve. OK, so your line is going to either be like that or like that. OK, going upwards or downwards, and that depends on the slope. Again, we're linking into some of the work that you've done on quarter geometry of the line. Again, I'll refer back to that when we're graphing now shortly. And <clears throat> quadratic is either a U or an N shape. That's the kind of curve we're talking about whenever you have a power of two. OK, <clears throat> so take these functions here. 
so it's the number before the x that tells you what way these linear functions are going to go. So remember, these are going to represent lines. They are, of course, linear. And they are linear because we've only got a power of one on the x. OK, uh, so again, when we graph these and I'll show you how to do that, we're going to get straight lines. OK, and it's the number before the x, the coefficient of the x, which is where you get the slope. OK, if you remember from your coordinate geometry of the line, but it's this number before the X. That tells you whether the line is going to be going upwards. Or downwards, if it's negative, it's going down. If the negative number before the X, it means it's going to be going down like this. If it's a positive number before the X, it's going to be a line that goes up like this. Then moving on to the quadratics. And of course, these are there for your curves. And of course, your quadratics. Again, we're looking at the first number here, the, the number before the X squared term, because it's the X squared terms that tells you it's a curve. So the number before the X squared curve, if that's positive, it means it's going to be a U shape. And if it's negative, so that's technically a minus one times X squared. That means it's going to be an N shape. OK, so it's the number before the X squared term, the coefficient of the X squared term that tells you the shape of the curve. OK, so take a look at this question. So we're going to get into a little bit of graphing now. Graph the function F of X is equal to 2X minus 4 in the domain. Minus one is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to 4. Now, I know this looks a bit complicated, but actually all it's telling me is we're going to take our X values or our inputs. These are the values we're going to input into the function um, and they're going to be between minus one and four. OK, so this is how we're going to be able to get some points to plot. Now, already just from the look of that function, remember, it can always be written like this. Is it going to be a line or a curve? And of course, because it is just a power of one, we know it's going to be a straight line. And the number before the X here, because that's positive, we know it's going to be a line that's going upwards like that. OK, so we know a lot already just from the function itself. We know exactly what to expect when we draw this. Now, the word domain. That is just another word to describe your X values. In other words, your inputs. And this is the domain here. So what we're going to do, we need to draw a line. So what do you need for a line? Well, you need to plot points to be able to draw a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my domain, the values here that they've given me for X to input into the function. And then I'm going to be able to get some points to plot. So I often find the easiest thing to do is set up a table for yourself, OK, for any kind of graphing functions. And sometimes in the exam, they will already set up a table for you and prompt you to use that for your working out. But it just helps you keep organized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some values here from between minus one and four to get some points to plot. Now, technically, for a straight line, we only need two points. But just to be sure I have done my points correctly, I think I'll just do three points to make sure that three of them all are in line, just in case, as I said, I make a little mistake. So let's start off at minus one anyway, and maybe pick another point then in between. I'll go with zero. And then the last end point as well is probably a good one to take. So there we go. I'm taking X values inputs between minus one and four. So there we go. There's some inputs between minus one and four. So now to get the corresponding Y value. So remember, you want your relationship between the X and the Y. And to do that, I'm going to sub in these X values here. So remember, whenever you sub anything in, keep brackets around it. So I'm going to sub in the zero. And then I'm going to sub in the four. And then I just have to work this out. So you can type that in exactly the way you see it there on the calculator. Uh, two times minus one minus four is, of course, minus six. Now that will give you the point. The X coordinate is minus one. The Y coordinate is minus six. So there is the point I'm going to plot. Now let's do this one. When I sub in zero, two times zero, zero, take away four. Again, check on the calculator, type it in exactly as you see it with the brackets and everything. 
uh, and I'm getting minus four. So the point I'm plotting is zero minus four. And then the last one, two times four is eight minus four uh, is of course four. So that's the point four, four. So that's more than enough. Now I've got three points and I'm going to plot these on a graph. So draw your X and Y axes, okay? Make sure you put your lines on the lines. You'll always get squared paper uh, in your exam papers. So it can make graphing really easy. Um, and then I need to go down as far as minus six. So just make sure on your Y's you're going down as far as minus six. So that is, of course, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. And again, make sure you're evenly spacing these out. Follow the boxes. Use one box per unit. How far do I have to go up on the X? I need to, uh, sorry, on the Y. So minus six is the lowest on the Y. Four is the highest. So two, three, four. Yeah, your Y is always the vertical. And now the X's, which is always the first numbers, we need to go from minus one to four. So there's minus one. Then one, two, three, four. OK, again, evenly space it out. Keep with the one box per unit is, is the best way to make sure you're spacing it out correctly. So now let's plot minus one on the X and minus six on the Y. So go to minus one on the X and then down to minus six on the Y. So it's actually here. There we go. Zero minus four. So zero, go into the middle and then go down to minus four. And then four along to four on the X and up to four on the Y. There we go. So now this should make a straight line. And it does. That is the function 2x minus 4. And we knew it was going to represent a line, and we also knew the line was going up like that. And just a little note, another word you're going to come across when you're dealing with functions is range. OK, so if you remember, we, the domain were the x values, the range is the outputs or the y values that you get when you put in your x values, when you input the values in, the range are the results, the values you get out, okay? Your outputs, your y values, they all mean the same thing. These are my results and this is the range of this function. Okay, let's have a look at this function. So we need to graph the function of f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. And this time the domain is minus 2 to 4. In other words, your x values we're going to take between minus 2 and 4. Now, again, we can rewrite that as y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. It's the same thing. And now what am I going to get with this? What do I know already uh, will be the shape of this? So we have a power of 2. So straight away, we know it's going to be a curve, a quadratic, yeah, is your power of two. And with the curve, you're talking about a U or an N shape. Now, you always look at the number before the X squared. Now, there's no number there, which, of course, implies it's one, one X squared. And one is positive, which means we've got a U shape. OK, so we know already what that's going to look like. Now, let's do our table of values. And we'll be able to figure out what our outputs or our range. And then once we get those Y values, we'll be able to plot. Now, unlike the line where technically you only need two points to draw a line, because this curve is, you know, turning, it's not going to be able to be drawn with just two or three points. So that means when we're dealing with the quadratic curve, we're going to have to plot all the points in the domain to get a really good idea of how this graph looks. OK, so here's the table. So my domain has to be between minus two and four. So on the left for your X values, take your values between minus two and four and leave space to sub those in and then we'll get our results. OK, and that will be, of course, our Y values. So again, we're going to sub each of these values in, in for anywhere there's X in that function. And anything you sub in, remember, keep brackets around it. So if it's X squared and the X is minus 2, it's going to be minus 2, all to be squared, and then minus 2 times, put in the minus 2 for the X there again, and then minus 3. And then 
type that in exactly like that into the calculator with your brackets uh, and then don't forget to square it and so on and make sure you've done that really accurately. So there we go, type it in and press equals. So the answer is five. And now I'm going to do the same for minus one. Sub that in. Now, if you're very confident you have it written out correctly in your calculator, you can use the arrow button then just to change those X values in the brackets uh, to what it now needs to be, in this case, minus one. So check you have that exactly the way you have it here. Press equals, that's zero. Now sub in zero. That is, of course, minus three. Now sub in one. That is minus four. Now we're going to sub in two. Now let's have a look at what our points are. So when the X is minus two, the output is five. So when the X is minus two, the Y is five. When the input is one, the output is zero. When X is zero, uh, we get minus three for the Y. Now there's our points, and now we're going to one to plot. So let's have a look at our x values to see what we need to um, do on our x-axis. In other words, as far as we need to go. So we need to go to minus 2 on the x-axis all the way up to 4. And so that's the horizontal. And then on the vertical, the y-axis, we need to go as far down as minus 4 is the lowest. And I need to go up as far as 5 is the highest. OK, so let's draw that. OK, so there we go. So let's go back to our points. The first point is minus two, five. So along to minus two on the X, up to five on the Y. The next point is minus one, zero. Then zero minus three. Then one along one at minus four, down to minus four. Then along two down to minus three, uh, three, zero, and four, five. Okay, so now you see, we know we're getting a U-shaped curve, so now we're going to connect this with a smooth curve line. My pen is going. <sighs> And there we go. That is your function. X squared minus 2X minus 